Hello, thanks for tuning in. This is Mr. Bossy. In this lecture, we are going to go over topic 4.1, electoral systems and rules. Learning objective for 4.1 is describe electoral systems and election rules among course countries. Let's dig into this. Uh, so starting off, you know, uh, competitive elections, uh, whether they exist or don't exist or the extent to which they exist, really determines the level of, of democracy that a, that a nation state uh, exhibits. Uh, in some regimes, electoral rules and systems are structured to follow or to allow for the competitive selection of representatives, while in others, you know, rules are frequently changed to advance different political interests. Uh, we can start out with China here. And the National People's Congress of China selects members indirectly through a series of local and regional elections. And while China's constitution indicates that these lower level elections allow citizens to shape the upper tiers of the Chinese Communist Party, the reality of politics in China is that the CCP leadership plays a significant role in the selection of candidates for these elections. The CCP allows eight other parties to operate in China, uh, but this really just creates a fa facade of a multi-party system. China's constitution states that this supposed multi-party system will be led by the Chinese Communist Party, and no other party other than the CCP is allowed actual governing power. Moving on to Iran. Uh, Iran's Majlis members are directly elected in single-member and multi-member districts, which sometimes require a second round of voting. More on that here in a bit. Uh, candidates are vetted by the Guardian Council, and the legislative body lacks formal political party structures. Now, a small number of the 290 seats in the Majlis are reserved for non-Muslim minorities, such as Christians, Jews, and Zoroastrians. Uh, you know, these reserved seats uh, in the legislature for religious minorities are viewed as um, a way to allow some type of religious diversity, um, but they really don't have much power. There's such few seats. Um, the one major religious group, religious minority group that doesn't have representation are the Baha'is. Uh, they're not granted a seat because members of this group are persecuted as apostates to Islam uh, by Iran's government. Moving on to Mexico. Uh, Mexico's Congress as you know, is bicameral, made up of two chambers. The Chamber of Deputies, which is the lower house, uh, includes 500 members. 300 members are directly elected in single-member districts by plurality. And the other 200 are elected by a proportional representation in which uh, it's a party list system. So on a ballot, you would vote for the candidate for your district, and then you would vote for the political party you support. In the Chamber of Senators, 96 members are elected in three seat constituencies. So there's three uh, senators for each Mexican state, and then there are 32 seats that are chosen by proportional representation. Uh, even when the PRI was was dominant was the dominant political party in Mexico until 2000. You know this proportional representation system that is part of the elections guaranteed that minority parties would win some seats in the legislature. Um, this this really gave Mexico the appearance. Again, we're we're, we're looking at these 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 countries that are developing democracies or illiberal democracies uh, that are transitioning. Uh, there's there's a lot of uh, government structures, institutions that are p 
put in place, and, and quite often they give the appearance of competitive democracy, uh, but but not in in reality. Does that actually happen? Uh, so there is, uh, you know, this transitional period that Mexico is going through uh, is at a point now, though, where there is fairly competitive elections, despite uh, the institutions that were once just a, a show, essentially. Uh, one other thing about Mexico is that gender quotas uh, in the party list system have helped increase female representation in the legislature. Uh, so there are seats that are reserved for women. Nigeria's system is, is pretty similar to Mexico's. Uh, members of the Nigerian House of Representatives are directly elected in single-member districts with representatives from each of Nigeria's states. The number of representatives elected from each state is based on population, so proportional representation, whereas the Senate has three members directly elected from each of Nigeria's 36 states. There are two major parties who have alternated control of the National Assembly. Uh, we will get into political parties more so in a future lecture. Um, Nigeria's mix of single-member and multi-member districts allows for representation from all of Nigeria's diverse regions, along with the guarantee that multiple parties will have representatives elected to the national legislature. Moving on to Russia. Uh, changes to the state Duma elections in Russia have returned it to a system in which half of the representatives are directly elected from single-member districts and the other half are chosen through elections that use proportional representation with a threshold. Uh, after the election system was changed to accelerate the move of United Russia, which is Putin's party, uh, to be the country's dominant party, uh, Russia's electoral system is now fairly similar to Mexico's system for its national legislature. Russia's mix of single-member district and proportional representation allows the representation from all of Russia's diverse regions, along with the guarantee that multiple parties will have representation elected to the national legislature. This gives, again, the, the appearance of a competitive democracy, uh, even though United Russia dominates electoral contests, including for president. Um, so th there's not really uh, a whole lot of competition. Uh, the whole idea of the, the threshold limits minority parties uh, in order to seat members in the Duma. A party has to have won 7% of the vote or more. And if they don't, they don't get seats. Um, so that that's a limiting factor. Uh, moving on to the UK. The United Kingdom's House of Commons members are directly elected under single-member district first-past-the-post rules. Uh, while governing power in the legislature alternates between two major parties, the UK's single-member district system allows a representation from members of other parties in the UK's different regions. Uh, and this is you know, primarily most pertinent to Scotland and Northern Ireland. All right, that's a wrap for topic 4.1. Thanks for listening.